let's talk about that. Somatics of trauma. Lead to it. Well, if we actually look at, if we look at psychotherapy as a profession, right, we take 10 steps back. What we see is that so much about the psychotherapy education and institutions and profession is derived from colonizer settler paradigms. And we can see that when we look at the pathology-based model and traditional psychology says, what's wrong with you? Trauma-informed psychology asks, what happened to you? Culturally-informed psychology says, what happened to your people? And liberation psychology says, hey, what continues to happen to you and to your people? And so we actually have to take into account that, for, that in regards to trauma, for many of us, we get hitched on the PTSD, right, post-traumatic stress disorder. And for many of us who inhabit identities who are marginalised by society, it's actually present, pervasive, systemic, structural, institutional, rooted in historical traumatisation that is based upon unabashed racism that has resulted in colonialism, genocide, land theft, war, enslavement, and a pillage of the land that is underpinned by a philosophy of extractivism. So I'm just going to pause and, and let us all take a breath there. And then what happens with trauma with PTSD, with something terrible in one's past, is that we then hyper-focus on the individual, which is fine, right, which is fine. Um, and what happens with PTSD is it creates a set of future-oriented survival strategies that live on in the present moment. And we can also, we can also as a result of this, hyper-focus on the individual neglect to take into account ancestral trauma and the body echoes of what has happened to our ancestors that lives in on lives on in us today and we can also lose sight of a more expanded awareness around wholeness and resource and resourcing you know resma menicum says that Resource is primary, and trauma is that which disconnects us from resource. And we need to always remember that resource is primary, and we have access to resource. And our ability to tether ourselves into resource is what will allow ourselves to not be withered and weathered by the per persistent, pervasive, systemic, institutional trauma so that we can do our own individual work while also not taking out other people in our efforts to move ahead as a peoples and as a society. And in terms of that resource being primary, I want to offer into the space a decolonized approach to secure attachment. We know that attachment theory is very much rooted in the Eurocentrism of a hyper-focus on the dyadic relationship between the parent, typically the mother and the infant, and how the imprinting of that then impacts someone over the course of a lifetime. I've experienced a lot of benefit from it, and it did nothing to help me repair my relationship with my parents and my people and my culture or to the land. And what was helpful for me was a decolonized approach to secure attachment, which then allowed me to, to land into resource, right? So it's secure attachment to, to nature, the rhythms and the seasons and the cycles of life, yeah. And how to take care of the land, how to take care of each other, like our siblings who are salmon and caribou and tundra and black spruce. It's secure connection to ancestors. And that includes your bloodline ancestors and it also includes your professional ancestors and your spiritual ancestors and religious ancestors and your 
cultural culture bearers, and it also includes your activist ancestors. And your ancestors with a capital A, like the ancestors that are the elements and the elementals. If we go in terms of a a big time approach, it's the ancestors who co-evolved alongside all of these other ancestors that allowed for those ancestors, so the ancestors of those ancestors to exist. All right, so our ancestors of rock and lichen, because rock and lichen together become earth and dirt, yeah, which then becomes the ancestors of other vegetation and then our ancestors that eventually became salmon and our ancestors that eventually became caribou. So the ancestors with a capital A. And then it's secure attachment to culture. So music, food, language. And the ancient technology that weaves its way through all the rituals that mark the transitions of humans over the course of a life of many lifetimes within a, a village setting is song, story, movement and silence. So it's a secure attachment relationship to song and story and movement and silence. Secure attachment to our bodies, to the communal body, to touch, to our five senses, as well as the three hidden senses. And within this secure attachment framework with my body, it's, it, that, that, that then gives rise to secure attachment to rest and work and play and nourishment and pleasure. And then lastly, it's secure attachment to time. Right, this bigger, larger construct of time, which then allows me to land into a cosmology that places myself and my parents and my people into a actually into a a, a, a a web that's so large that once I'm tethered into it and I can place my parents, my people in this web, my people who have experienced forced displacement. It then allows me to be with the ruptures and the rupturing in such a way that the need for repair doesn't have to happen in a time frame that Western psychotherapy says it, that it needs to happen within. And that the healing that Western psychotherapy wants me to move towards with an urgency, with an urgency that's framed within an insecure attachment to time you know, drives me to then move towards can actually then be softened.